Ladies and gentlemen, hello and you are watching TTV News with some latest events in the Nguyen province. And now we come into details. Ladies and gentlemen, in the afternoon of March 22nd, the Brunswick People Committee held a regular meeting in March chaired by Chairman of the Brunswick People Committee, Nguyen Thanh Ngoc. Attending the meeting, there were Vice Chairman of the Brunswick People Committee, Nguyen Văn Thắng, the Brunswick National Assembly Delegation, Departments, Branches, People Committees of District and City. In the context of continuously complicated and unpredictable development of COVID-19 epidemic, the province has seriously implemented solutions of safe adaptation, flexibility, effective control of the COVID-19 epidemic to develop the local social economy and ensure social security with the rustic direction of leaders at all levels and ranges. Accordingly, the agricultural production has a total planting area of over 98,000 hectares of annual winter spring from 2021-2022, reaching 88.8% of the cropland. Livestock situation and prices of livestock products are stable. Industrial production and import export activities continue to recover and roll well with export turnover of over 1,400 million US dollars, import turnover of 1,385 million US dollars, total retail sales of goods and service revenue was estimated at 24,477 billion Vietnam dong. Total state budget revenue was anticipated to be 2,688 billion Vietnam dong, accounting for more than 26% of the estimate. Local budget spending was estimated to be more than 3,100 billion Vietnam dong, accounting for more than 30% of the estimate. The tourist business in particular has rise with a total income of more than 573 billion Vietnam dong, growing to 26 million people and leading the country's tourism in the number of visitors to spring tourism. On levels, ranches and localities have paid attention to social security activities in a timely and durable manner. Disease prevention control remains reality, in which the population aged from 18 years and under who were injected the third dose of vaccination reached more than 54%, while delayed from 12 to 17 years on was more than 41%. In conclusion, Mr. Nguyễn Thanh Ngọc asked departments, agency, districts, towns and city to focus on clarifying objective and subjective reasons in the number of contents mentioned in the report. Currently, the budget revenue, modest disbursement of public investment capital, state management of land, at the same time, he also devised 10 major responsibilities to boost the province's economic, cultural and social growth in the coming time. The Department of Education and Training said that, due to the complicated development of the COVID-19 epidemic, the ending time of this school year for the terrorist could last until the end of June. Therefore, the graduation exam in 2022 will be held in July 2022. This year high school graduation exam will remain basically the same as in 2021. The Ministry of Education and Training will not amend the high school graduation exam regulations like every year. It will take place in two days with five exam subjects. They consist of three independent compulsory exam subjects including math, literature and foreign language. One elective subject from two combined exam subjects of natural sciences, including physics, chemistry, biology, and combined ones of social sciences, including history, geography, and civics. Particularly for continuing education students, there is no foreign language exam. The 2021-2022 school year ends before June 30 to ensure compliance with the plan of organizing the high school graduation exam in 2022 for high schools continuing education centers during the review process for students. They need to follow the program contents and refer to the illustrated exam questions as well as the official exam questions of the previous year's exam subjects.
Based on the developments of COVID-19 epidemic, the school flexibly deployed teaching and review work for the 12th grade students. In the coming time, the Ministry of Education and Training will have specific guidance on the high school graduation exam in 2022 to have candidates feel skilled to review so that they are ready to take the exam. In the past time, the non-irrigation exploitation one member limited liability company has coordinated with people's committees of districts, towns, and city to review and evaluate the effectiveness of canal in the area under their management. According to a report from the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, the functional sector is proposing to remove 52 ineffective canals. The irrigation branch under the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, together with relevant units, continue to review and evaluate the effectiveness of the current status of the canals. Currently, the authorities are collecting opinions from the local people with the canals passing rule. If the people agree, the department will advise the provincial people's committee on the policy of removing, restoring or changing the functions of ineffective canals. Currently, many ineffective canal routes have been leveled, eroded on, and even lost the current state of the canal. The Department of Agriculture and Rural Development is currently proposing the local peers committees to develop plans on land use of the canals that have been cleared by the province. Continuing with other news, large scarecrow trees in the Inglucus apple, mango, longan, banana, and other cypress fruits, which are the main groups of the province in the agricultural restructuring scheme of the province, vision to 2030. The special type fruit trees are identified in the main crop system by the province due to many advantages such as traditional crops with famous national brands, high profit and income rates, as well as many opportunities for export. These are items with many advantages in terms of investment costs. The cost of growing in Vietnam is lower than other countries. The quality of agricultural products is increasingly improving. The province is focusing on using technical measures to improve the average yield of each type of fruit. In addition, it also increases the application of high technology and mechanization in the production, preservation, and processing of agricultural products, reorganize production towards building less simple fields, establishes cooperatives, creates legal forces to associate with enterprises of preservation, processing, and consumption of agricultural products, especially specialty products with brands, contributing to ensuring food hygiene and safety and ability of product traceability. Recently, Tân Hội Camille Tân Châu District hosted a forum titled Party with Youth, Youth with the Party as part of youth main activities in 2022. The forum was lively and interactive. Union members and young people in the Camille were informed about the Camille's general situation and activities in 2021 and the first months of 2022 by the heads of the Camille's party committee and peers committee. Simultaneously, they acknowledged the active contributions of union members and youth to social security activities and the overall development of the Camille. The members and youth of the commune were also interested and asked many questions to the commune's leaders, mainly around the content of attracting talents, vocational training, supporting startup capital for young people, along with the contents associated with the construction of cultural institutions in the commune. The leaders of Tân Hội Communist Party Committee and Peace Committee properly answered questions from union members and youth. Simultaneously, union members and young people are being encouraged to continue to contribute and make suggestions to build a thriving community. 
Ladies and gentlemen, currently, what many people are concerned about is the symptoms experiencing being determined to be cure of the COVID-19 epidemic, the secular that COVID left behind as long-lasting, severely affecting health and quality of life. Many hospitals in the province have begun to participate in the treatment of post-COVID secular for recovered adults. Being put into operation in December 2021, in the first month, the post-COVID-19 pandemic syndrome of Hong Kong General Hospital received and examined more than 550 patients. Up to now, there are an average of more than 20 visits per day. Research results show that 33% to 76% of patients may experience post-COVID symptoms lasting at least six months after infection. After a positive with COVID-19, I did not feel as well as before, slightly blurred eyes. Then I went to the doctor and was diagnosed with post-COVID-19 syndrome. But before, I just thought that after treating COVID, I would be cured. As defined by the World Health Organization, a post-COVID syndrome situation occurs in people who have been previously infected and whose symptoms have persisted for at least two months from the time it was determined to be cured and cannot be cured explained by alternative diagnosis. Symptoms that patients often experience are fatigue, shortness of breath, cognitive dysfunction, and some other symptoms. According to researchers and statistical medical organizations, post-COVID symptoms manifest in multiple organs. Post-COVID symptoms are systemic, multi-organ, and present in more than 25 groups. These symptoms often appear at different times, even when people do not have COVID-19 symptoms for days or weeks after being infected, leaving many people who have recovered from COVID-19 to little attention. However, in fact, post-COVID diseases occur not only in severe and elderly patients, but also in young people aged 30 to 40 years with my COVID. It is critical to screen for post-COVID pathology in order to enhance both physical and social health. If we don't look into it, the harm will be permanent. The second thing that many people will worry about too much will lead the body to gradually collapse and be unable to work, resulting in a life that is not scaled. As a result, the post-COVID assessment is critical and cannot be be subjective or ignored. Currently, there is no particular therapy for post-COVID disorders. The fundamental aim of post-COVID syndrome treatment are to decrease disease damage and prevent the occurrence of long-term harm. Patients should not be alarmed. If they develop symptoms of post-COVID-19 syndrome, instead they should seek medical attention for a checkup and proper treatment recommendations. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today's TTV News. Thank you for watching and see you next time.